And I realized that the things that I suffered with, with mercury issues, have helped me help others. I don't want to have surgery. I fought it for a long time and I keep thinking I can just age out. I'm supposed to learn and I'm supposed to share and I'm supposed to teach. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to be teaching and sharing all that I'm going through in this process and helping you to learn along the way. I had a really interesting experience today. Yesterday was a a little bit of a lousy day. I woke up at about 2.30 in the morning and thought, oh, I'm cycling again. I've had endometriosis for forever. So often when I cycle, I have pain, abdominal pain, especially when I eat or need to go to the bathroom. I woke up at 2.30, thought, oh, I need to go to the bathroom. So I headed to the bathroom and the pain got exponentially worse very, very quickly. I thought maybe I had food poisoning because I was so nauseous. I glanced at myself in the mirror on the way there and was literally white as a ghost. I was covered in sweat and I thought, what in the world is going on? So I hoped it was food poisoning. I hoped that I could get it out one end to the other. Unfortunately, that wasn't happening and I just was in misery. And I'm usually very stoic. I'm actually used to quite a bit of pain and I don't usually say much, but this was another level. Yelled for my husband. I said, can you please, you know, bring me a glass of water, a bowl if I'm going to throw up. And, and he was very concerned because he knows I, I take a lot and I wasn't, I wasn't able to handle this very well. So I tried to get in the bathtub. It didn't help. That usually does. Hot bath usually helps. It wasn't helping. I, I was just in so much pain. I thought I was just you know, in labor or <laughs> something. Finally, I just laid on the floor. He got a hot pad, a heating pad for me. I put it on my, my abdomen and just laid there and moaned. And he said, we're taking you to the emergency room. And I hate that. I don't like to do anything like that. But um, I asked him to give me a blessing. In our, uh, in our church, we believe that uh, the laying on of hands, you're able to deliver, you know, blessings of at least peace and comfort, if not healing. He did that. I took some ibuprofen headed to the hospital. By the time we were there, the pain had subsided. It was down to about a five or so from about a 10 where it had started and um, waited and waited and waited. You know, that's what you do in the emergency room. Finally had an ultrasound, ultrasound done and uh, the ultrasound technician said, oh, looks like you got a great big cyst on your right ovary. Well, that didn't surprise me a bit because when I was 23 years old, I we were trying to have, you know, children, actually. I was in dental school and we were hoping to be able to start our family. And I wasn't successful. We weren't successful. We tried for a few years and we found that I actually had some pretty extensive endometriosis. I had really painful periods, a lot of pain going on during that time. And so we had a wonderful doctor out there in Omaha, Nebraska, that really tried to help me. Um, I had a, a very serious surgery couple of weeks, well, a couple of months, I guess, before I graduated, uh, the doctor said, if we're going to have any hope of you being able to get pregnant in the future, we need to get this all cleaned up. They'd hoped to be able to do the surgery just laparoscopically with, you know, minimal, minimal incisions. And um, he said, but there is a chance it's going to have to be something more extensive. It ended up being more extensive. It's called a laparotomy, where it's kind of like having a C-section. I joke, it's like a C-section, but you don't get a baby out of it. That was a really long recovery, a couple of months recovery after that. They'd cleaned everything up. And he said he was so surprised at the extent of damage, the endometrioma that was on my right ovary at the time, and really wanted to save it just because I was so young and hadn't had any children at the time. And he really wanted to save that. So he did. So fast forward, you know, nearly 30 years. And that same ovary is just causing me issues. And what I think happened yesterday is I think I had an ovarian cyst, one of those endometriomas. I think it burst. And um, it's been very sore, it's still very sore today, very sore. I reached out to um, just, you know, share a little bit of this experience yesterday on social media and have been astounded at the beautiful words of kindness and prayer and hope for me, but also some suggestions. I have some suggestions of things to look into and different avenues to take. I don't want to have surgery. I fought it for a long time and I keep thinking I can just age out. I'll just hit menopause and I'll age out of this, but that's not happening. And as I've been learning, actually, I've been researching even just this morning, as I've been learning, if I have hormonal imbalances now, they're going to continue after menopause. Just because hormones lower doesn't mean they go away completely. So if there's imbalances now, they're going to continue. I need to get this figured out. This is what 
the interesting thing this morning came about because of I was sitting in church didn't know if I was gonna make it to church today but I did I thought I just need to sit and as I was sitting in church I was thinking about this and thinking about we've had a few things happening with our family lately and I remembered a story from a gentleman earlier in the week it was pretty touching actually it was an older gentleman and he was in my dental practice i was talking with him about some pretty significant dental need he had we were done with the conversation and i got up to leave and he said there's just one more thing i'd like to share with you if that's okay and i said all right that's great now this gentleman had been diagnosed with something called chronic lymphocytic leukemia years ago and it's one that takes a long time to get sick from. So it had been a, a decade or more. He'd had some massive treatment about 10 years ago. And the doctor told him that this will come back again if he continues to live. He was about 75 and he said, I have 25 years left. I suspect it will. And he said he was feeling sorry for himself one day. He was thinking, you know, I've, I've done what, what God asked me to do. I've lived a good life. And why, I, why am I having these problems? I, I just don't think I deserve this. And he said he, he doesn't get dreams, but he gets thoughts early in the morning. And he said he was thinking about this early one morning and he got this thought and he knows it was God answering him. And he and said, you know, did the Savior suffer? And I said, well, yes, he did. Was it fair for him? No, <laughs> he didn't deserve it. Do you want to become like the Savior? And the man said, well, yes. Then how do you expect to do that without having passed through and experiencing some of the things he experienced? So I said, I don't complain anymore. And as I sat there in church this morning, I thought about this gentleman and his story. And I realized that the things that I suffered with, with mercury issues, have helped me help others. I have been able to share the message about that challenge that I had and open people's eyes to the things that could happen inside of dentistry that could influence their health. And I've been able to help change lives, literally, and change health through the things that I've learned because of my own struggle. And I was told this morning that this is just another of those that I'm supposed to learn and I'm supposed to share and I'm supposed to teach. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna be teaching and sharing all that I'm going through in this process and helping you to learn along the way because I believe that hormone issues are one of the biggest things that women and men struggle with in our world today. And we need to know what we can do about this other than surgery, other than pharmaceutical medications, other than hormone replacements, which honestly sometimes can make problems worse or at least push them down the road a little further. So I'm excited to share. I don't know that I'm excited for the journey, but the journey is part of helping others. And I hope that we'll together.